In this lecture, we're going to give you a brief overview of the web-based console. Now, you're not expected to know all the ins and outs, but just the general settings that will help you along the way to troubleshoot your system to enable certain features and to take full advantage of PLC Next. So at the very top, we're going to have the information section, which is going to display the general data that's also displayed in the top right. So here, as previously mentioned, the hardware version as well as the firmware version are going to be important in downloading the right tools. Next, we've got the Diagnostics tab under which we can find the Profinet local bus as well as notifications. So for Profinet, remember that you have two ports that are available to you that are going to carry the exact same IP address. So you can change these settings not on this tab, but on the network tab. However, it's going to provide you with those details right here. You're also going to be able to map certain devices depending on the PLC Next configuration that you've got, and you'll see them within this list. And last but not least, you can also browse to your modules. So this is going to be explained in the advanced section, but you can see all of your input and output cards in this tab. The notifications tab is going to provide you with some information, in this case about the ports going up and down, but it will be more extensive once we've got some applications running in the background of the PLC Next, and you should be able to see some of the status updates on this tab. Next, we've got configuration, very important tab. So at the highest level, we've got the network. As I mentioned in the previous video, this is where you can reconfigure some of the settings of the network adapter. Next, we've got system services, very important. Once again, there's going to be preloaded applications and services on your PLC next. And so this is where you can enable or disable based on your system requirements. So one example, we will be using OPC UA. By default from the factory, it's going to be enabled. This is where we can untick the box and disable OPC UA. And similarly, we can do that with ProfiCloud if you're not looking to send any of your data or communicate with the cloud services. It's certainly recommended that you disable the services that you're not going to use for your specific application. Next, we've got a link to the PLC Next Store. So if you enable this feature, remember that you need to be accessible over the internet, which is going to allow you to download certain applications directly into your PLC Next module. Next, we've got ProfiCloud Services. And so this is a service provided for PLC Next by Phoenix Contact. And we're going to look at this in a subsequent video. That being said, this is where you can enable the connection to ProfiCloud for, from your specific device. And last but not least, we've got a web services tab under the configuration. And this is where you can start sending HTTP requests to your device. You can also set an HTTPS level security certificate, which is also going to be in the following section. And so under security, we're going to find user authentication. If we navigate to this tab, we're going to be able to add a user, change a password, as well as modify the roles. So we can create a user by pressing on this add user button. And here I can create user number two, give it a password. Obviously we want something that's going to be a lot more reliable than six characters. And that's going to be indicated by PLC next. Press on add. Once the user is in place, we can as I've said, modify the password, but we can also modify the rules. So the rules are going to dictate what this user is going to be capable of doing on the system. So the HMI permissions are going to restrict the user based on what is given as a permission in your PLC Next Engineer software. And so you can create very intricate access levels based on these EHMI level privileges. Once you click save, that user is only going to have access to those specific roles. Of course, as nothing is checked, they're not going to be able to see much through this interface. Next, we've got certificate authentication. So if we select this tab, we're going to be able to upload certificates for our devices as well as devices that we can trust. We can also access the firewall settings of PLC Next by navigating to the appropriate tab. And as you can see, we can set fairly advanced ACLs that, that are going to give us full permission and control based on the ports as well as the IP addresses that we're going to accept or reject. A very important tab, the SD card. So if we click on SD card, we're going to allow a support for an external SD. As I mentioned previously, if you're not going to use an SD card for your application, this is best left disabled. That being said, since we're going to be loading Linux as well as Docker and Node-RED onto our PLC, we definitely need to enable this before proceeding with the download. 
And last but not least, we've got the administration tab, which is going to allow us to first and foremost perform a firmware update. So this is something we'll take care in a next episode, but we can download a file from Phoenix Contact and update the firmware of our PLC. We also have license management as well as PLC Next apps. And as we dive into a deeper tutorial on this, we'll learn how to install new applications, which will then be displayed under this tab and allow us to have more control of our PLC.